Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be painting a Rottweiler and I'm doing this in oil on paper. If you have a look in the item description, it will tell you what my um, colour palette is. So you'll be able to know exactly what colour paints I used in this project. So for my paintings, I tend to do them in four sittings and I use quite a bit of solvent in each sitting. I do this so that I can allow each layer to dry. But if, you're, if you want to do it a la prima, which you can do, you need to make sure that you don't use too much solvent or no solvent really in any of the lower layers because it'll mean that you're painting, you lose control of your painting and um, you'll just get yourself into a bit of a muddle. So I would always recommend steering clear of using too much solvent if you want to do it all in one go. So the reason why I do my painting in four sittings is because I find it much easier to try and use the painting as a sort of a journey really. If you think about a painting you're kind of going from A to Z and trying to go from A to Z all in one go is really very very hard. So I like to try and split my painting up to try and make it a little bit easier for myself. So when I first start laying down my paint I'm really I'm just guessing at what I'm seeing. I I don't know for sure if it's right. I don't know if I've got the tone right. I don't know if I've got the temperature right. So I'm just sort of laying everything down to try and get a really good sense of what I'm looking at. Um, in this first layer, I wash on very, very thinly using my oil paints with quite a lot of paint thinner. I use Gamsol, but you can use anything that you like using it. It doesn't really matter what you use. I just use that because it doesn't smell too, too badly. So I let that, that layer dry and then I start onto the second layer. And now on the second layer, I'm trying to get a little bit closer to what I'm looking at. Um, I'm laying down the paint a little bit more thick. Um, but I'm still using paint thinner. I've not moved on to using thicker paint. I'm just trying to get the sense of the tones a bit closer and the temperature as well a little bit closer. The reason why I have two images beside me is because I like to break up what I'm looking at. I want an image to glance at in black and white so I can really concentrate on getting my tonal values correct. And then I want uh, an image in colour so that when I know that I've got my tonal values correct, I can then try and figure out the temperature of what I'm looking at. It's very difficult to do sections in isolation of other sections because you can't work out if your tonal value is correct unless you see it next to the section next to it or the section just above it or the section just below it. It becomes very difficult to judge what you're looking at unless you try and work on the whole thing in one go. So that is why I really see doing a painting a little bit like going on a journey because it's very difficult to make a correct judgment straight away. I mean, maybe some people can, but I just, I just can't do it straight away. I, I have to build up to getting it correct. So I think you really shouldn't give yourself a hard time if you start off and you're thinking, oh no, it just doesn't look right. It, this bit doesn't look correct. You've just got to try and work up towards what you're trying to achieve. I find a really good way of um, checking your tone or values if they're correct is if you are able to take a photograph of your painting as you're going along, maybe on your phone or, or a tablet or something like that. And then if you turn it into black and white, you can then compare it to the black and white image that you have beside you. So you can see straight away if your tone or values are correct or not. 
So then on my last layer, I really sort of go in quite heavily with much, much thicker paint. And I also use some linseed oil. Now you have to be quite careful with linseed oil that you don't overdo it. So you have to practice with it quite a bit because if, if you go in too heavy handed with it, you'll lose complete control of your painting and it will go it'll be sloppy and it will it will look basically like one great big murky mess. I try and save my really light areas um, to the end really before I go in with the really thick paint because white is very opaque and I find that if I get it wrong with my white paint um, it becomes very very chalky so you have to be very careful with your light areas that if you are adding white you you will automatically start cooling down your the colour of your paint so you have to make sure that you're always adding chroma to your mix. So if you're doing the tan areas, you want to make sure that maybe you're putting in some yellow ochre or some Indian yellow or something to make sure that you keep the colour nice and rich. You don't want it to go chalky. So I hope you've enjoyed watching my YouTube video today I do try and post every week apologies that I haven't done it for a while my laptop broke so I'm I'm back to speed now and hopefully I'll see you for the next one